it's a fucking animated move. Oh my god. Just, Around. I'm, okay. Guys, I'm kidding. Guys, okay, okay, guys, I'm already getting triggered, okay? I'm already getting triggered. I should just chill, okay? I, I, <laughs> how do you come away with the conclusion that he spared Katana because he was simping for her or he thought he thought she was pretty? How in the world do you come up with that conclusion? What are they? You mean the tournament is over. Tournament is finished. Tournament is over. Yes. Has to face the final boss of no! Combat. Um, no! If you paid more attention, then you'd hear Shane say that Goro is the champion of Outworld. True! He's making Goro the final boss of this Yes! Tournament. Yes! Uh, excuse me? That's true! I can put what do you mean, Josh? What do you mean, shut up? That's true! Mortal Kombat. Okay, yeah, you can. You guys, you guys can hear that, right? Legend Scorpion's revenge was the most disappointing thing since my son. Wow. Yes, I really enjoyed this. No alcohol required. 7.5 out of 10. B plus. 9 out of 10. Now, this movie was probably the Mortal Kombat movie you always wanted. I don't think there's anything to complain about with this one. True! Based! Uh oh. Let me try this again. Uh oh. Mortal Kombat Legend Scorpion's Revenge is an animated martial arts film based on the Mortal Kombat franchise. It is also yes. the first R rated True. Mortal Kombat movie. It was well received by fans and critics. True. And has a pretty good meta score. True. And I didn't like it. Wow. I'm not trying to be controversial. How dare you? I genuinely didn't like wow. this movie. And in this video, I'll explain just why that is. Hopefully Explain. By the end of Tell this us. Video, What's going on, Sanic? And my point of view, and get more wow. out of me than whatever the heck IGN said. You'll definitely get what you came for, but not much else. It is a little. I remember that. I will also be comparing. I remember that from IGN. 1995 Mortal Kombat film and the first five chapters of Mortal Kombat 9, since their plots are about the first Mortal Kombat game. But before I start, this movie is very gory. And I don't think Susan will really Oh, like guys, this. if you're a child, so which is 50% of my audience, you guys might want to... You guys might want to <laughs> buckle up. This is going to be very gory. We start the movie with Hanzo Hasashi's backstory. And wow, is it amazing. Everything about this intro is perfect. But yes, Sonic, true. I you uh -oh. hated this movie. Uh -oh. That doesn't mean I can't like parts of it. The true. action choreography is awesome. The tragic backstory is well set up. But most importantly, the gore. Holy balls to the gore. I True. really can't believe some of the stuff I'm seeing on screen. True. And I bet the animators definitely went all out here. I especially love the one scene where the Lin Kui ninjas start running away because of how scary Hanzo is. Overall, an excellent intro that sets up Scorpion's motives. We then get introduced to our three other protagonists. Liu Kang is training in the temple when suddenly he gets ambushed by a mysterious figure. Oh no. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. You didn't know. Who else has blue lightning when dashing? Again, I, I remember I, I I remember so many people were like, "How did he not know? That's such a stupid line in the movie." I don't know I I don't know if Sonic is like doing this like because he actually has it's, it's actually a complaint, but like I don't know if I don't know if Sonic's doing this because it's an actual complaint that he has, but like it's supposed to be like just just so the audience could know, you know, like, I think it's implied because like, I think in the scene, the scene before it, or like during the whole scene, Raiden is just going like fast, fast, fast without the lightning and all that kind of stuff. And then like, as he's approaching him through the front, then the lightning comes out. But like, I think that's supposed to be like for dramatic effect for the movie. Kind of like how, like, kind of like how, kind of like how, like when movies, have like an object, like when a character throws an object and it's super fucking fast, um, and it goes through someone, um, but it looks, but but the, but the way it looks fast, it it doesn't it doesn't look like it doesn't look like it would be fast enough to go through someone that it, at that speed. It's just like slowed down for the audience. Like so, this is an example of like visual cues for the audience it's not like it's not it's not like that's actually what was in it's a fucking animated move oh my god just Around. Like, I'm, okay. guys i'm kidding guys okay I, guys i'm already getting triggered okay i'm already getting triggered i should just chill okay I, I, uh, <laughs> okay meow then they get ready for the tournament 
So a quick review of Liu Kang. He's fine. He doesn't really just find out and I honestly forget he's in the movie sometimes. Wow. I really he's in the movie like 50% of the time. Of Liu Kang, so he's in the, he's like, like in the movie like the entire way. How do, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, how, do, how the hell do you like... How, how the hell do you fucking forget that Scorpion... I mean, Liu Kang is in the movie when he is the second most like... I think he has like the second most screen time or something, or he's the second like focused, most focused character. Like anytime the scene is not on Scorpion, it's either it's either Liu Kang and the heroes, or Liu Kang, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> like I, I don't like. Okay, I, okay. Man, next we get introduced okay. to Johnny Cage as he has an argument with Princess Azula. How about doing something besides crying about your career? It's okay. You can laugh. It's funny. And now he's ready to go to the tournament. Okay, let me get this off my chest. What? Uh, how do I say this? I did not like Johnny. <gasps> no way! I'm always a fan of Johnny Cage in the game. No, even the no way he didn't say that. Version. But I really did not <sighs> like this Johnny. Johnny has always been a balance between funny and asshole, but I felt like he leaned too much towards the ignorant asshole side. I'm just not the biggest fan of it. Am I the only one who never got that vibe? Am I the only one who never got the vibe that Johnny was like an asshole in this movie or an ignorant asshole? Like, yeah, like, I don't think... I, Maybe the, a little bit of the ignorant, but I think that's like the joke because throughout the half of the movie until like Johnny and Sonya and Luke Kang catch up with each other, like Johnny still thinks that he's on a movie set. And that's the gag. That's the joke is that he, like, he thinks he's on a movie set. So he's basing his humor and like his jokes based on like, what is this? Like, come on, bro. What the fuck? Like, hey, what the fuck are you like? It's like. That's the joke. The joke is that he doesn't think this is real. Like, he's supposed to be, like, the fish-out-of-water character. Um, it's not until, like, he witnesses a fight himself or he actually witnesses... Like, we'll get to it. I think we'll get into it in the video. But, like, it, like it, that's the joke. That's the whole thing. I don't... I don't... I, I don't... I don't see that as a problem. At least not in my view. I don't I don't know. Maybe you guys have a problem. Maybe that is a problem. Maybe that's like a Johnny thing that's like a problem. But like yeah, I don't I don't know. I, I just I don't know. I never got it. Cause like I I don't know. Maybe I didn't get it. Fake. This thing better not go straight to video. Let me just pee out some blood first. <laughs> <laughs> like he okay, so like Sonic like uses these jokes as examples of him being ignorant and like why he why the humor didn't work for him. But he uses the funny jokes. <laughs> He uses the funny jokes. Like, those are funny jokes. Like, this thing better not go straight to video. Like, that's a joke. That's a funny joke. Like, I... And then, like, when, when like, when Jax got his arms ripped off, he basically just said fake and gay. That, like, that, that's funny. That's funny to me. That's funny. I think that's funny. Like, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I don't know how that's not funny. Again, humor is subjective. I can't really say like this is objectively funny, but it's I just I never had a problem with it. Like he uses examples of like legitimately funny jokes, but I, I can't really say I, I don't either, I don't think there's a winner or loser here. Like when it comes to this discussion, because like again, like some people find you know certain people funny. It just it seems humor is subjective. So, two yeah. jokes I liked from him. Hi, Johnny Cage. We'll make sure that Earth realm so dumb. Well, shoot, it's funny. Buddha, snap your fingers, get us, get home. us home. This is just my opinion. <laughs> I know Johnny, a lot of Johnny, people Johnny, like this Johnny, version Johnny, of Johnny, Johnny, so I may be the odd ones out here, but I really wasn't the biggest fan of this cage. Anyways, let's move on to Sonya. Wow, so brave. Sonya has a fight. Brave. And starts remembering brave. her underdog days. Congratulations, you've just become my new pet project. Ew, what the fuck? And then she gets invited to the tournament. At first, I wasn't the biggest fan of Sonya, mainly because she's me. You're a meanie! But after thinking for a bit, I do like her a bit more. If I were a soldier sent on a mission, I'd probably have a- She was good in Scorpion's Revenge. It's probably just a case of the Mondays. Am I right? So, she kicks Johnny in the balls. Twice. That's a win for me. 
overall, she's okay. Look, I'll be honest. Look, she's I'm fine. Just, she's she's fine. Wanda Rousey. What the hell are you talking about? So here's our Seriously? Words. Meh. I don't like. And okay. Not a really strong lineup, but don't worry. I'm sure our main character will carry this film. Speak of the devil. Yes. We cut back to Hanzo. In hell! He is imprisoned yes. by an orc and wow. escapes to find Shinnok. You better wow. cover up, Hanzo. Nobody needs to see your scorpions. <laughs> or do we? On the way, he plays Dynasty Warriors. By the way, that I scene was cool, by the way. Hanzo design. This scene was he cool, by the way. Him going like full Samurai Jack on the Netherrealm Demons. Fucking awesome. Squanchy, and they make a deal. Get the amulet. I mean, key. Then he gets his revenge. Hanzo is dead. Call me Scorpion. Yeah! You see my really quiet scream there? Yeah. Because, you know, I know the neighbors. Yeah. And I wasn't that excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> then we go Brave. back to our trio as they head off to Shant Sung's island. He has no idea what he's doing. Should we tell him? His journey is one of discovery. Besides, Besides I, find I find it amusing. Such You're a good a line. Asshole. What do you mean he's an- Oh, hold on. I don't remember this. I don't remember him. What do you mean he's in an- Mortal Kombat 9, at least they tried to tell <laughs> Oh my god. Raiden- That doesn't make Raiden an asshole because he was like, Look, he'll find out- He Look, I'm wise enough to know. I've seen this enough to know that- I'm wise enough to know that he's going to figure out what his purpose is, what he's going to do, and how he's going to perform in this tournament on this island. Plus, it's kind of funny seeing him stumble around and all that kind of stuff. That, that's that's so Raiden. That is so Raiden. That was such a, that's such a good Raiden moment. Like, that's such a good Raiden moment, and that's totally in character with Raiden. Because Raiden is not the type to hold your... Uh, to, not, not that he did this in this an example of MK, MK9, where he's, like, holding his hand and telling him everything. Like, it's good to do that as well. But also, like, Raiden's saying, like, you know what? I've seen it. I, I, like, he, he's wise enough to know he's got this. He's got this. He'll, 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 he'll know. He'll know what to do. His journey is of self-discovery. And if it's self-discovery... I'm not going to intervene because that's not self-discovery, you know? Self-discovery is not when someone, you know, tells you what is going on and what to do and how everything plays out. It's self-discovery. And plus, you do you do funny thing, you do funny things while you do it. That's not an asshole thing. That's just like Raiden being funny. Yeah. That's Raiden having a sense of humor like Lambert like in the Lambert sort of uh, approach, like in the Lambert spirit. Conquer all. Dun dun dun. I guess his ignorance will be Raiden's amusement. Then they reach reference land. Reference, reference land. I clapped. Remember that? I clapped. Oh my god, guys, I clapped. I can't guys, oh my god, I soy jack so fucking Tara. much. This is probably my favorite reference in this movie. Then Shant Sung appears, and he starts explaining stuff using Doctor Strange magic. Wow. They created a tournament to safeguard each realm from the threat. This was the best scene in the movie, by the way. The way he explained. The way he explained, the way Shang Tsung explained the whole tournament and the whole concept of Mortal Kombat and what Mortal Kombat is about, that is literally, the, it was the perfect, the perfect explanation of Mortal Kombat. It was so fucking good. So fucking good. I fucking love that scene. Asian, the finest warriors must do battle to decide the fate. Wait. True. <gasps> that's the great Kung Lao. Yes, that's great Kung Lao. defeated by Shang. In the original no. time, Shan gets defeated by the Great Kung Lao. Yes. And that's why he hires Goro to defeat the Great Kung Lao. Yes. Can't believe they retconned one of Goro's biggest They did not characters. retcon it. He's going to bring it up. He's going to bring it up. I think I've seen this. Hey, video. guys. This yep. is Sonic from the future here yep. to make a correction in the statement I just made. <laughs> I never noticed this you in better. first watching, but I'm you on can your see ass. on the image where the Great Kung Lao is defeated that it is obviously Goro standing there, which means Goro yes. was the one who defeated the Great Kung Lao. But that raises more questions to me. Why was it presented in a way that made it look like Shang defeated the Great Kung Lao? It wasn't, it wasn't presented in a way where it wasn't presented in a way where Shang defeated the great kung Lao. like you see like you just see right there that like fuck let me seems to me why was it presented in a way like it's not presented in a way where shang sung defeated the great it, it this screenshot right here right here just shows that goro was the one who killed the great kung lao you know what happened is that shang sung like took his soul 
Shang Tsung took his soul and claimed him. All right, technically, Shang Tsung did like over or not overcome, but like one up great Kung Lao. You know, it's 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 a way. Plus, since this is Shang's like presentation, it's Shang one upping himself. It's him. It's him. You know. It's him being Shang. It's him like bragging about stuff. You know, it's it's him being bragging about Defeated stuff. The Great Kung Lao. Did they like double tag team against the Great Kung Lao or something? Nope. This is my theory, and I believe this might be what the director was implying. Shang Tsung still got defeated by the Great Kung Lao, and Goro defeated the Great Kung Lao. But Shang Tsung was the one who made this PowerPoint presentation, yes. so he split True. the image to make it look like he won against the Great Kung Lao, so that he gets to save fate. No, not not because he won. He just he just overcame like he 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 you know he got his shit like he he he, he one up to kung lao he, he claimed his soul like how he did in the in in the original timeline he claimed he's claimed his soul and stuff like that at least that's what i think they're trying to do i don't know i think it should have still been like goro defeating the great kung lao like at least they should have shown it very clearly especially since we don't care about shang Tsung's power level in this movie because he never has a fight like he's not a combatant in this mortal Kombat tournament he's not supposed to by the way shang Tsung is not supposed to fight in the tournament he is the host he is the host of the tournament remember that guys mk9 got that wrong mk9 got that wrong now there's different iterations where like there's different iterations where uh, of that of of like the MK1 story and all that kind of stuff, where uh, like Shang like can fight in the tournament if he chooses. Like the '95 movie uh, made it to where like he can fight in the tournament if he chooses. Um, uh, I think MK9 made it seem like where made it seem where Shang Tsung, uh, Shang, you win the Mortal Kombat tournament if you defeat Shang Tsung. That's totally wrong because like Shang Tsung is the host of the tournament. Um, there, again, so different adaptations did it in different ways, but generally Shang Tsung is the host. He does not fight in the tournament. And so he fight, he fights it. And by the way, some people might bring out where well, he fought in MK1. You have to fight him in MK1. In MK1, he fights because, uh, uh, he fights because, uh, Luke Kang is, you fight Shang Tsung in MK1 because you're chasing him. Cause in the story, Luke Kang is chasing him down. He's chasing him down. He's chasing him down. Like. To, to defeat him and all that kind of stuff because Shang tried to burn the whole island down out of like he he baby raged uh Shang Tsung baby raged and he Shang Tsung baby raged and he tried to bring down the entire island killing the earth realm heroes and all that kind of stuff so yeah <clears throat> Who cares about whether or not he defeated the Great Kung Lao or not, or he won nine tournaments or something like that. It's Goro who was doing the fighting. But I guess they didn't want to spoil Goro being in this movie, so that's why they only implied it in this one scene. But anyways, my point still stands. Shang Tsung did take Goro's W. He made the presentation look like he was the hero of Outworld, and he is the winner and champion, when in reality, it was Goro. So, <laughs> poor Goro. But yeah, anyways, back to the video. Okay, I'm done nitpicking. Okay, wow. just one more. Zatarans are an extinct race that Reptile has been trying to find throughout the series. They don't seem extinct here. They are an endangered species by... During the time of MK1 and 2, I don't remember... I think it's by MK4 they are extinct and rip, reptiles, Reptile and Chameleon, both Chameleons, are the only ones out there, but they are an... I think during the MK1 time period... Yes, during the MK1 time period... They are an endangered species. They are not extinct. All right, I'm done. Just one more. This dude gets his arm ripped off here, but then he gets it back. Did he grow it back? Does he have a twin brother or something? Enough nitpicking. And then, Kano shows I'm pr I'm pretty sure it's just an extra. I'm pretty sure it's just an extra that like, it, it's just it's not supposed to be the same person and stuff. So yeah. We don't care about him. Jax shows up, and Sonya runs to him. What the H? Why is there this big ass force field? Why shan't Sun? Why? Did he ask the Black Dragon to install this? Couldn't you have some goons just grab Sonya? Why does this need to exist? What? 
why not? <laughs> why, 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 why not? I don't, I don't understand. Like, is there like, just so they don't interfere in like trying to kill Shang Tsung or trying to kill the champion? Cause the, te- uh, cause the tournament hasn't started yet. Tournament hasn't started yet. And Goro's on display. Goro's on stage. So just in case anybody tries to go up and attack him, the force field is there. Like, I am so irritated. I don't. I don't get why that's a big deal. <laughs> I don't get why that's a big deal. You better open this, or I'm gonna use your ass as my own personal punching bag. Oh, that is so hot. Can I be in the game now? Then Goro shows up, and he beats the shit out of Jax. Let's move on to Scorpion. Scorpion is just about to grab the key when suddenly. Raiden shows up to give him a pep talk. You all have choices. Live in the past, or live for the future. And my revenge? Revenge is too heavy a burden to carry. You are a free man. It's time you start acting like it. Free man? What do you mean free man? Can he go to Hawaii for vacation any time he wants? I'm pretty sure- so- Not sure if this is supposed to be a nitpick from Sonic, or if it's just for comedic purpose- like it's just a comedic bit that he's doing. But I think it's because, like, hey, like, Scorpion, yeah, it's just, it, it means what it means. Like, it's, it's, it means what it means. Like, he's a free man. He, he can do what he wants. He can do what he wants. Like, he's not bound by anybody or any, anything. He's, he's free. Scorpion doesn't want anything except revenge. Anyways, True. Anyways, back to Jax. He gets his arms ripped off. And Raiden saves the day. You are not to interfere in the tournament. By the way, that Raiden, that whole Raiden speech was so good. I'm, I'm. I'm honestly very shocked that Sonic didn't uh, acknowledge how great that scene was with Raiden. He was so wise. He was giving advice. He was making sure people are on the right track. Like that that's that's a Raiden thing to do. Like to ignore that really good moment, that really good speech. I feel like that's I think that's really like I I, I don't know. I I think that's kind of dumb. I was unaware the tournament had begun. Hold on, I'm coming for you. You hear me? Get you out of here. Wow. I mean, that is some serious method acting there, am I right? <laughs> okay, I see now. I'm not the only one that's getting annoyed. And the Mortal Kombat talk. That's funny! That's funny, though. Like. <laughs> I, how is that. Because does that. Can anybody explain how that's annoying? Like, I, I genuinely want, like, an answer as to, like, how that's annoying. Like. Again, the bit is that uh, Johnny doesn't still doesn't know that he's like in an actual Mortal Kombat tournament. He thinks this is a movie set, so like, <laughs> like so him's like, wow, like shit, like, like he he like he sees something really real and he thinks it's it's it, he thinks it's fake. So he's like, oh shit, you know, hey, we're in a movie because he thinks it's in a movie set. So he's like, oh shit, <laughs> that's some really good method acting right there. Like, fuck, dude, like, oh, that's okay. tournament begins. This is where things get spicy. spicy. Johnny gets teleported to an old building. Then he fights Baraka. This fight sucks, mainly because it doesn't feel like a battle. It's not supposed to be a battle. Remember, up until this point, up until this point, Johnny still doesn't know that he's in and out. This is the point where he finds out that this is the realization moment where he finds out that this is not fake. This is not a movie set. He's on Shang Tsung's Island. He is in the Mortal Kombat tournament. It's supposed to be a chasing because he doesn't know what's going on. Johnny doesn't know what he's going on. Like, do I fight? Do I like hit these motherfuckers? Like, what do I do? Like, he doesn't know because he still thinks this is like a rehearsal thing. Like, he just doesn't know. If you didn't know where you were at, I think you would probably fucking run. All right. Hey, guys, if you were put into, I don't know, let's say like a convention or like I, I, just put it in an area and someone was trying to attack you, what would you do? What would you, even if you knew, even if you knew how to fight, you would probably run because you don't know what the fuck you are. Come on. Like, like this isn't like. And by the way, this isn't Baraka, by the way, because in Battle of the Realms, he comes back. It, it just, they just look the same, and yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, no, that's, the, it's the whole point. The whole point is that he doesn't know. That's why he's running away. Like a Tom and Jerry skit, 
It was nice being able to make one of these and have some language in it. Yeah. I always hate when shows, they have that free reign to do that, and, and then they it's... overdo it. There's nothing adult about this right. or whatever. I feel like we used it in a natural way in this yeah. sh show. It's, it's, it's not, in there, but it's yeah. not like so in your face. That's what you would say yeah, in, if you're yeah. being chased by a creature with knives coming out of his wrists. Hey, asshole, that was custom. Dick. But by far the worst part about this fight is the ending. Johnny runs to the rooftop. Again, if again, if you think that you're on a movie set and you think that Baraka or the Darkotten, if you think that Darkotten was just a guy in a suit, um and he rips you it, it's just a guy in a suit like doing a, a doing a scene and he cuts your and he cuts your uh he cuts your your suit that you didn't know was going to get cut, I think you would probably say something like that. That's something that you would probably say. Off while giving the finger and oh dies. Jumps off, then starts flying and lands on a tree. Okay, and what a baraka. He dies from falling debris on a rooftop where Johnny somehow planned this and baraka. He didn't plan it! What are you talking about? He didn't plan it. He just. He was running. He was running for his life because the thing, the 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 island was gonna not the island, the building was gonna collapse. He sees a point where he can jump off, and then he jumps off. He's like, "Oh shit, he's gonna jump off. Let me let me, let me just jump off." Probably during that time, he realizes if I jump off now, Baraka's not gonna or the Tarkatan's not gonna have time to Baraka's not gonna have time to uh, to catch up. So there we go. Let me jump off. Like it's just. He didn't plan it. He didn't like, okay, I'm going to make sure that he hits this barrel so that the gunpowder can catch the building on fire. Then I'm going to go up on the rooftop. Then by the time I get up to the rooftop, the building is going to collapse to a point where Baraka cannot, the Tarkatan cannot uh, escape. Like that, That's not what he did. That's not what he did. He decides not to destroy the rocks or jump off to chase Johnny. He just stands there like a good Tarkatan. And dies. Filthy Tarkatan. Then we jump to Sonia. If it, dude, like, if you're at a point where like there is no escape, if you're, that's such a common thing to. That's such a common thing to do, though. That's such a common thing that I I, I would assume like. That's such a common thing that I would assume would be like in um, like, ugh, fuck. How do I say this? It's kind of complicated. So if you're running, if you're running for your life or you're running through like a destroying build or a sh building that's being destroyed and all that kind of stuff and you realize that like even if you keep going forward there's no way out, you would probably stop. Like you would probably just accept that you're going to die. That that's probably what the that's probably what the scene was. That's probably what like the reaction was. It wasn't like why didn't he jump? Why didn't he do anything? It's not a fa it VS reptile. Oh my god, guys, guys! Why am I getting triggered over this fucking video already? Like, oh my god! I thought I thought I was just gonna be like, yeah, no, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, bro. I'm. I, this is the exact mannerisms that I did in the first time I watched it. Before Jesus, fuck! About the fight. I would like to praise reptiles' design. Reptiles' design has always been a balance between his human form and his reptile form, and I personally think they really nailed the look in this movie. Life is good, but it can be better. But it can be better. Oh no, skipping. Really sucks. No. Nope. Start the fight with reptile booping. <laughs> I'm skipping that. I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna spam cringe for that shit because that 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 is uh, that's that's cringe. I'm gonna spam cringe. Not spam it. I'm just gonna put cringe. There we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not looking at that. And then he shoots acid onto Sonia's arm pad, and then decides to miss every shot. And then he gets defeated with one move. And then he gets decapitated. No, no. Show the whole fight scene, Sonic. Don't do that. Sonia got punches in. Sonia got punches in. And before that, before Sonia got punches in, she was able to. I, I believe. I believe she was able to fully like figure out where Reptile was by throwing mud on Reptile, like through his like throwing mud on his body, uh, while he's invisible, like the Predator, Predator style. Because this whole thing is this whole sequence was Predator style. Um, this this whole sequence was like a, a, a Predator callback and all that kind of stuff. So that's how Sonya figured out like how like to defeat or how to overcome Reptile and all that kind of stuff. So he didn't he didn't get defeated in one move. Let's be honest about this. She she got punches in. Now, now, technically, like, technically, like, 
Like, if somebody, like, if you got punches in and then you got, like, one final blow, like, that doesn't really count as, like, I don't think that really counts as def being defeated in one move. Like, was Thanos, was Thanos, like, defeated in one move when Tony snapped his fingers? I mean, there was a whole buildup before that, but what ultimately got him was a snap of a finger. So I don't think that really counts as... I don't really think that counts as being defeated by one move. Thank you. First time. My problem with this fight is that they establish just how strong Reptile is, yet he still loses. Let's compare abilities. Reptile has the element of surprise, invisibility, heat vision. Which again, which again, Reptile, his location was revealed with having mud being put on him, and Sonya was able to figure out where he was because Sonya is just that skilled of a fighter. It's not, it's not like, it's not, it's, okay. Sid Spit and can cut trees. Somehow, Sonya has gun. I forgot to mention Reptile can dodge bullets. He, she doesn't have guns. She has good fighting skills. Everybody knows this is, oh, this is, this has always been like part of like Sonya's like character is being able to, to really like, to fight well. Like, there's a reason why she was to chosen for the tournament. is because she... One of the best fighters of Earthrealm. Pink energy ring. And most importantly, pot armor. This fight and the Baraka one just feels really unsatisfying. Imagine a character showing all his cool abilities. And they get defeated with one move. They didn't get defeated by one move. Remember, there was a build at. She got punches in. And she was able to detect where Reptile was. She was able to dodge Reptile's attacks. Encounter the things. It showed it in the tri in the showed it in the scene. I don't know. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why Sonic selectively chooses certain parts of the fights. That's not true. All right. It just doesn't work. Or that's just that's just painting painting the picture in a very wrong way. Talk crap about the 1995 movie all you want. At least the reptile vs Liu Kang fight in that was more fun because their fighting skills were on par with each other. Honestly, if Braca and Reptile were not held back by the plot armor, I bet they could win this. Guys, plot armor is when the, uh, plot armor is when one of your main characters wins fight. Guys, plot armor is when main character wins fight. Tournament, but alas, this is not their movie, so they must die. Rest in peace, dental problems and lizard man. Your efforts will not be forgotten. Then we cut to Scorpion torturing a Lin Kui ninja. Ouch. Knowing I will kill every last <laughs> Thank you for subscribing to 234 Yay. Then we cut to Liu Kang vs Princess Azula. It's funny. You are Raiden's chosen one? No wonder your realm has lost so many tournaments. Do not get up. And then she gets defeated, but Liu Kang doesn't kill her. Because she's pretty. I take no pleasure in hurting someone. Wait! <laughs> wait! Wait! Wait, <laughs> how do you watch, how do you watch Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpions, Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpions Revenge, directed by Ethan Spaulding, written by Jeremy Adams, produced by Rick Morales, and come and watch Luke Kang's whole characterization, and knowing Luke Kang's characterization, and l seeing the way Luke Kang acts, how do you come away with this fight? With Liu Kang sparing Katana, how do you come away with the conclusion that he spared Katana because he was simping for her or he thought he thought she was pretty? How in the world do you come up with that conclusion? Liu Kang is a pacifist. He's a Shaolin monk. He doesn't kill people. He doesn't kill people. He spares people because he's an honorable warrior. He's a good guy. He's a, he's a kind-hearted folk. He is a good guy. He's a pacifist. He's not doing this because he's simping for Katana or something like that. He'll only kill when he has... No, even then, even then, even then, he will, he will find any excuse to not kill. Now, later in the movie, he does kill. He does the Shaolin Monk's fatality, but I'm 100% sure that... I'm 100% sure that 
the only reason why he killed that black dragon dude later in the movie was because the producers looked at what Liu Kang was doing in the movie and they said, hey, Liu Kang's not doing enough cool stuff. Everybody's doing fatalities. Everybody's doing this. Liu Kang hasn't done it yet. Let's just give him like a fatality that people like from the games. And then they just did it on a goon, like somebody who doesn't matter, like somebody who's not significant, somebody who like, you know, like it, it, somebody who like Liu Kang wouldn't actually kill like in, within character and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was like a producer's choice. Um, because as you notice that uh, like Luke Kang just doesn't kill throughout this entire movie and in battle of the realms, he doesn't actually kill anybody e else either. He only kills a uh, Shao Kahn and the one being, well, we don't talk about that, but yeah, we're not the one being sh corrupted. Shut up. Johnny and Sonia did though. I thought of something so stupid. I'm going back to the Baraka and Reptile oh, no. fight. Shut up. Shut up. I need to defend my baby reptile. What if they were never trying to kill their opponents, but they only wanted to defeat them? Think about it. In Mortal Kombat, you can choose to either kill or spare your opponent. Kill him! Whoa, whoa, wait a second. I'm not gonna kill anyone. So what if Baraka and Reptile were holding back their powers because they didn't want to kill? My evidence is that they could clearly kill Johnny and Sonya any time they want. I think the whole thing, like, you can technically say this with, like, any movie ever, with any movie ever that has a hero versus villain. Like, you can always say, why didn't Thanos just, uh, why didn't Thanos just, uh, like, I don't know, like, why didn't, I don't know, this is coming. You can you can you can just do this with like any movie ever. Like why didn't Thanos just like snap his fingers immediately when he got the gauntlet? Like why didn't Thanos just like like why why didn't Thanos just use a different like power from the Infinity Stone to defeat a certain type of hero that was giving him trouble? Like why didn't Thanos do this? Why didn't Thanos like it's just like so nitpicky. It, it's just like it, you're getting into like nitpicky territory where it feels like it just it just feels like you don't know that some I, I'm pretty sure he does, but it just makes it seem that like you don't know that a lot of scenes, a lot of fight scenes are just played out for dramatic effect. Like they're they are, but they're never in the realm of like, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do th they're never in the realm where if it's like that obvious of like, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? La 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 and all that kind of stuff. Cause like at that point you're just nitpicking. Um, so yeah, it's just like you can you can play that game all day back and forth and all that kind of stuff i'm just i'm not really sure how you would respond i, I don't i'm not sure how I, like i would really respond to that if i'm gonna be honest or also like also like since like reptile and since like the whole reptile and sonya fight scene was uh since the whole reptile and sonya fight scene was um was supposed to be a predator reference it could be just like predator play, uh, reptile playing playing with this prey. Isn't that a thing? Isn't that like a thing of like predators playing with their prey? Just like kind of like teasing them, not teasing them, but like just, you know, like like taunting them, like just just making them feel fear and all that kind of stuff. That's like a that's like a thing like these type of characters do, like these type of creatures like would do. So like I don't know, like it's just reptile you know. and Baraka just wanted to be honorable warriors. Hey, I am pretty sure that's not exactly what it was, but yeah. Okay, this is a bit unfair. Let me remove my stealth. Rah, take my acid! Oh, oh, uh, careful, Sonia. You don't want to hit my acid, oh, it's or you know, bear. you might die. <laughs> you broke my back. Well, that's it for me. GG's WP. I'll get you next time. <laughs> wow, guys. Bitch. Then we cut to Shang Tsung watching the fights. Quan Chi, your warrior from Netherrealm. He's proving to be quite formidable. Yes, that warrior of yours, who is killing my Lenkui ninjas, is doing such a great job. Then someone sends the Black Dragon to kill our heroes. How dare you! The Lin Kuei are not on Shang Tsung's side. The Lin Kuei are part of Earthrealm. They are, they are on Earthrealm's side. The Lin Kuei do not serve Shang Tsung in MK1. Like... The, the the link the link way are not on Shang Tsung's side. Where do you, where do you get that from? Where, <laughs> this the link way are not on his side. I don't I don't I don't know.
and the reason this is allowed is because they aren't part of the tournament. Lads aren't here for the tournament. They've been paid to kill you. Well, Raiden, since they're not part of the tournament, why don't you just give them one of your Thunder Hands massages? You had no problem doing that in the 1995 movie. Uh uh. I've seen this complaint a lot of like when. When, when the black dragons were out there trying to kill, when they were clearly breaking the rules, when the black dragon were sent out there to kill the Earthrealm heroes, they were breaking the rules. Raiden has the ability and <laughs> has the ability and the authority to come in and just fry those motherfuckers up because they're breaking the rules. And Raiden can just intervene and just do that without any repercussions. The reason why, and you know what? I, I like how he references this scene because in this scene, Goons are out to attack the Earthrealm heroes, Luke Hang, Sonya, and Johnny, but Raiden doesn't intervene until later on. So why didn't he intervene the first time they did it? You know why? It was because Raiden had faith in the heroes. Raiden had faith like, you know what? They got this. They got this. The Earthrealm heroes, they can do this. They can do this themselves, you know? Like they, he doesn't have to like you're never like these characters are never going to grow or like they're never going to be properly developed or even like they're not they're never going to be properly developed or just well written if you have like one character like one OP character who does everything for them you know like imagine if this actually happened if Raiden actually did this the entire time you know what people would be complaining about they complain like they were throwing heroes they didn't even do anything like Raiden was just doing like doing everything for them like why didn't why wasn't the movie just about Raiden like why didn't they just do an MK9 story like like, you, that's exactly what they would fucking say. You know, that's exactly what they would fucking say. And, yeah, just... Ah, people just don't understand. People don't understand that Raiden allows people to do the things that they want to do so they can grow as characters, so they can grow as warriors. Like, goddamn, this is... It's, right, it's totally within character for Raiden to do this stuff. God, they did so such a good job with Raiden in this fucking movie. In, the, in both of these movies. So why not do it here? Look. I get it. The reason the Black Dragon are here is because we need more characters to kill. True. No, seriously, that's what the directors say. True. We needed to be able to kill a lot more people. True. We didn't have permission to use every character True. in this yeah. one. Do we want to kill more Mortal Kombat characters? Do we want to take a lot of Mortal Kombat characters and start killing them off? Or do we want to start doing like Black Dragon goons where it shows off the where we get like cool fight scenes with you know, with, with with the heroes and we get more fatalities, we get more action. Do we want that or do we want more Mortal Kombat characters to get killed? I think I'd rather take the Black Dragon goons. Like, we wanted to get Sector in yeah. here and yeah. I think Cyrax was in it at a certain I'm, point. I'm glad they didn't do that and I'm glad with the... I'm glad that we got the, the, the cyborgs in the last... In, in the next movie. We actually boarded a sequence with those characters in it, yeah. but it just couldn't make it. You get to live this time. Photos. Then the trio meet up, and Johnny finally finds out he's not in a movie. You won't believe this, but this isn't some sort of movie. This is the real wow. deal. No way. Ten minutes into the film, wow. they do some catching up. Fuckball. No one touches me with that. What did you just say? Fuckball. Fuckballs. <laughs> I, I, I remember when I first watched this, I did not even catch <laughs> I didn't catch that at all. I don't. I don't get what that's. I don't get what fuck balls is supposed to be, but <laughs> but it's fine. Like it's just. Fine. <laughs> fuck ball. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. To that I'm gonna be honest. I have no what to say. Natural way in this. I don't know what to say to that, guys. I have nothing. I have nothing to say. That is simultaneously the worst and best thing I have ever heard. They then find Scorpion with a bunch of black dragon bodies. Yes, that warrior of yours, who is killing my black dragon soldiers, is doing such a great job. Then Johnny does something very smart. He defuses the tension so they don't have to fight. Did you declare Mortal Kombat? Nope. But what about you? Did you declare Mortal Kombat? Good. Nope. Good. Great. Then no Nopers. Wait, do we have a Nopers? Do we have a Noper? Yeah, we have Nopers, right? We have Nopers in my chat. God, Nopers. It's I think it's all caps Nopers. Yeah, we do. We do. Fuck, it doesn't show up on this on, on this stream chat right here on the stream, but like if you if you're on desktop and you have the extension, you'll be able to see it. Nope. You did not click out. Nobody cl John declared Mortal Kombat. The Nopers. Guard, the tournament, everything. Do you feel bad? 
Do any of you feel bad for not telling Johnny this whole time? Literally this nope. only harmed him, but Raiden said Johnny lived without any injuries. Johnny got to settle everybody down and let everybody focus on what exactly is happening with Scorpion included. Pretty sure I'm pretty sure Johnny wasn't harmed here. Being selfish will somehow help him. He only seems to be concerned about himself and material wealth. That will keep him alive. But I honestly feel like he's only doing this for his own entertainment. Then Raiden shows up to ex- No, again, journey of self-discovery. A journey of self-discovery does not require somebody holding your hand and doing the discovery thing for you. It's about, it's about, it's about doing it on your own. And also being funny and laughing at it while you're doing it, while you're watching it. Explain how useless he is. And then he leaves. And then Scorpion leaves. Uh, Joel, when you were sitting in the booth recording these lines, how did you also find the truth in this character, in particular to how he contrasts How did you find the truth? How'd you do it? How'd you do it, Joel? Very well in this film. Tell us. That was cheering. Shut up, Botox. I'm just saying, he really killed the vibe around here. I was just... Oh, yeah, sure, she kicks him in the nuts, but... Yeah, you know, no. she's doing it for his own good. Yes. Then the trio keep moving on, and they get ambushed by the black dragon. Okay, so I wanna pause here and talk uh -oh. about how much I don't like the rules of this stupid Oh no! Oh. This is Mortal Kombat. Oh boy. This is Battle Royale. See True. someone you don't like. True. Kill them. True. See someone you like. Befriend them. True. Got to get to the middle of the circle. True. Where we dropping boys. True. I think we didn't want to do that either, where we're just filming a tournament right. and you're just watching. Right. Let's be clear. He's taking this clip a little bit out of context. They did want to do, they did want to do a bracket for this movie, but they felt like, number one, he didn't include it. I'm not, he didn't include it before. They, they said it before this. I remember I, because I watched the commentary three times. Three times because I like the movie so much. They didn't include, they didn't include, they didn't do brackets because of one time. They didn't think they had the time. And number two of this re, oh no. Number one of the, t of the time and number two, I think, no, because of this explanation as well. Number, I, I actually, now knowing that Battle of the Realms is out and now, now that we have Battle of the Realms, actually, I think it makes a lot more sense that this was a battle royale and the other one was a bracket. The tournament in, in, in Battle of the Realms was a bracket. Um, because nobody fights twice. People who lose are not fighting in again. Um, are not fighting in again. Like there's a there's a bracket in the MK2 tournament. It's just not explicitly shown. It's not explicitly shown that there's a bracket in, in, in Battle of the Realms, but it does exist. It does exist. Over here, however. It's a battle royale. And I think what they were trying to do is like, hey, let's have this be a battle royale. Let's have the other one be a bracket. Because if we do two of the same thing, we don't want to make it to feel, we don't want to make it feel samey. That's why I think what they're going to say right here makes a lot more sense. One right after another. So that that was, was the idea yeah. about getting them all spread out on the island yeah. and different locations and everything happening at the same time. You know, there are some advantages to having a boring karate, karate tournament. tournament. You get an audience and security to prevent bullshit like the Black Dragon showing up. Having a single elimination rule set would be much more organized. And it can showcase how strong you are. In MK9, Scorpion couldn't just fight Sub-Zero. He had to work his way up to fight him. Well, not necessarily. He didn't need to work his way up to fight him. Shang was making the rules up as he goes. <laughs> like, like, Shang Tsung just happened to run into a little argument, like a little school lunch argument between Scorpion uh, and Sector. And like when Sector, I think, or I think Cyrex pushed Scorpion, uh, Shang was like, oh, ho, 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 somebody wants to fight here. All right, here we go. Let's have this. A challenge. Here's the next turn. Here's here. Here's the next fight for the tournament. Like, he was making the rules up as he go. He wasn't working his way up. The, he, he wasn't working his way up to fight Sub-Zero. If Shang Tsung wanted to do it, if Shang Tsung wanted to allow, uh, if Shang Tsung wanted to allow... Uh, Scorpion to fight Sub-Zero the first thing in the, in the, in the, like in the first fight, he would. 
He would, because Shang Tsung was just making the rules up as he was going. Zero. You will demand nothing. Yeah, that's yeah, that's one of the problems of Mortal Kombat 9. Using Mortal Kombat 9 as a as a Using Mortal Kombat 9 as an example of like good tournament structure is just you're okay, you just don't understand the you just don't understand how Mortal Kombat 9 was written. Like you just like looked at like the fights and that was it. Scorpion's revenge. Scorpion can kill any Lin Kui he wants. No one's gonna care. Let me show you how broken these rules are in this movie. If I were Shant Sung, and if I wanted to guarantee my victory, I would start the tournament and send all my Lin Kui ninjas, all my Black Dragon soldiers. <laughs> Again, the Lin Kuei do not work for Shang Tsung. And by the way, Shang Tsung does not choose who... Uh, the Shang, Shang Tsung is not the one who chooses who... Uh, Shang Tsung is not the one who chooses the Earth Realm fighters. At least, no, yeah, no. Shang Tsung does not choose. I think it's the Elder Gods. They are they are by end. They're just randomly selected by the Elder Gods. Now it's not established in the movie, but it's it's definitely implied. It's definitely following the original timeline, and the original timeline is that the the Elder Gods invite the turn. Uh, the Elder Gods provide the scrolls. And the, oh, the the elder gods provide who is who who the who the participants are going to be, and you know, and then Shang Tsung gives out the scrolls. He does not decide himself. All these monsters, the Raka, Reptile, Kitana, and Scorpion all under the trio. The rules state that it must be single combat. Oh, you're right. In that case, I disqualify all these fighters from Mortal Combat. There, now they aren't part of the tournament, so they can kill you now. Problem? Gonna cry to Daddy Raiden? Raiden can't do shit. He can't even consult the Elder Gods. The Raka and Reptile are laughing at how bad this is from heaven. These rules are so bad. Oh my gosh! Nobody cares about these stupid 30 year old rules. Boomer. I will say. Shut up and enjoy some good ass. I will say that. I'm not really, like, I'm not really a fan, like, in general, I'm not really a fan of Mortal Kombat, the Mortal Kombat tournament being a battle royale. I think, like, in the movie, in, Sh in, in, Sh in Shang-Chi, in Scorpion's Revenge, uh, it was a little too Hunger Games for me, especially when they were, like, camping out and stuff like that. I'm not sure if that's really how I would want a Mortal Kombat tournament to be like, but you have to understand that this is, like, this is like the when Scorpion's Revenge came out. Uh, when Scorpion's Revenge came out, this was like the first time we ever really got a proper explanation or a proper like just like structure on how the tournament works. We've never got a we've never got a proper uh, telling on how a tournament works. Never. There has never been up until Mortal Kombat Scorpion's Revenge. And even Scorpion's Revenge is not really a tournament. It's just a battle royale. I'm just not sure. It, 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 but it was the best explained one. And it was like the most clear. It was the most clear one up until that point. Action, asshole. I'm not sure what that white bug was in the game. Okay. But I'll complain more about these rules later, when things wow. really get spicy. spicy. Wow. So Scorpion shows up to save the day, and then we get some Sonya action, with Johnny acting like a fool. Some Liu Kang action, and Kano does what he does best. Good fights, good fights. Sucking. Then we get the moment we've all been waiting for, the Scorpion vs Sub-Zero fight. Good fight. You will die for what you did. I don't even know, know who you are. <laughs> you included it. Pretty sweet. The fight ends with Scorpion forcing them both down onto That was a good scene. Concluding his arc. Then Sonya says fuck Earth Realm and chases after Connor. Then Johnny says fuck Earth Realm and chases after his date. And Liu Kang goes to the final challenge. Then Quan Chi visits Scorpion and reveals the truth. I killed them. It was me. It was me, Barry. It was me, Barry. Would say this is it was me. It was me. But it's worse than the original. I jerked so you I off. Complaining. If you are not the murderer, then who is? I am the one you seek. He's <laughs> just sitting behind me. He's been looking for this motherfucker for like four games. He's just <laughs> and thus, Scorpion's rage keeps him going. Then we cut to Sonya, and it turns out Kano has Jax. And he releases a bunch of monsters onto her. Hey guys, uh, why are we fighting her? Like, we do realize we're defending an armless man, right? Him being dead or alive won't affect the outcome of the Mortal Kombat tournament. Uh, don't we have, like, better stuff to do? Maybe. Get them! 
Can I go home? You're excused. Anyone else? No, no we're, we're, we're good. good. We're good. Get them! Then the I'm pretty them. sure. I'm. I'm pretty sure it was just Kano like commanding them. Hey, stop this and all that kind of stuff. We're we're here trying to cripple the Earth Realm heroes as much as we can. Some some she some simple stuff like back, that. But the monsters are proving to be too much for her. I've seen enough videos to know where this is going. Then you can. Now, if you're watching creature videos versus one human, one human blonde thick girl versus a few really monstrous characters, I question what kind of stuff you're watching. And goes to the final level. And faces off against Goro. Goro seems to be winning. Question what? What? I question how many you had enough of. So Shang Tsung does a premature celebration and asks Quan Chi to pour some wine. <laughs> right in front of him. Okay, no. Right in front of my salad. Then we cut back to Sonia getting destroyed, and just as she's about to get bored, Shining Reference shows up to save the day. Wow, that was a very impressive kick for a normal human being. Knocking over all these monsters. If we were to say each of these monsters are around yeah, 200 pounds, I, I, and there are I, three monsters... I, I will say that 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 moment was a little weird. I, I will say that one's probably have to something to do with the budget. Plus a horse. That would mean Johnny knocked over around 1,600 pounds of weight. Very cool. Then Johnny activates hacks and starts beating up everyone. Holy shit, Johnny Cage can fight. Holy shit, Johnny can fight. Seriously, is this some sort of subversion of expectations? If you're a Mortal Kombat fan, I'm pretty sure you- That's the whole- that's- No, Johnny can fight. Yes, we know that Johnny can fight. We know that Johnny could fight, but that's his whole story in MK1, was him proving that he can fight. Like him, like, it's- it, 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 it's- 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 it's a story of, like- it's a story of uh, Johnny's story in MK1 is like, hey, I want to prove that I'm not fake. Here's me fighting. Like, yeah, like that. Of course, that is like the revelation or that's like Johnny's big character moment is showing that he can fight because that's his character moment in, in MK1. Like he it's that's the realization. It's not like a. It's not supposed to be a twist, like, oh my god, guys, Johnny could fight! <laughs> I didn't even know! <laughs> like, it's not, it's not supposed to be that way in the movie, it's just supposed to be, it's supposed to be, like, uh, Johnny's moment of, like, showing that he can do it. Because that's, like, that, that's a story, that's a story in the first game. If you're not a Mortal Kombat fan, I'm still pretty sure you know Johnny can fight. If Johnny could fight, then why didn't you fight Baraka? Because he didn't know what was going on. So if you don't know what's going on and you're being attacked by a guy with two swords for hands, I think you would probably want to run, especially if you're not sure if it's real or somebody is in costume. And if somebody's in costume, why are they having actual blades? Of course you're going to run. Why didn't you fight the Black Dragon? Because they didn't let him! Because they didn't let him! They didn't let him! So Sonya tripped him! Sonya tripped Johnny! Sonya tripped Johnny to not allow him to fight! Like, hey, no, just stand down, I got this! Because because they don't know that he can fight. They don't know that. They think he's a, you know, Hollywood, you know, head up his ass kind of guy. They, that's... <sighs> Jesus With fucking Christ. With how strong Christ. you are, I'm pretty sure you could beat them easily. Did you get strong because you found someone you cared about to fight for? And Fuck, my bad. I didn't know I was- Oh, fuck. Oh, goddamn. Oh, my mic was muted. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, wait. Where was I at? Where was I at, guys? Where, <laughs> where was I at? Where did- where, where did I stop? Where did- <laughs> where did I stop? Where did I stop? Where- where- <laughs> Where did I stop, guys? Where did I stop? <laughs> oh, shit. <clears throat> <laughs> where, did I, where did I stop, guys? Where, 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 where did I cut off? Where was I talking about? Where, 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 where? <laughs> the rant about Johnny, you, pa you paused and instantly muted, so I... 
right after you paused. When I pause this video, just this video right here, right? Or just this part? Johnny was at a disadvantage in the in the Black Dragon fight. Yeah, Johnny was at a disadvantage in that fight too. There wasn't much that Johnny could do, especially when he was tripped by his own people. Okay, so Okay, so let, let me let me just go back just just in case. Right. Pretty sure you sort of subversion of expectation. Okay, so again, this wasn't supposed to be a moment. This wasn't this wasn't supposed to be this part. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so yeah, Johnny didn't get strong because he found he, Johnny was always strong. He just got the opportunity to show that he wanted to fight for someone. He wanted to fight for his crush, and that's just when he got to show that he could like he can fight. That was it. He didn't get strong because of that or anything like that. Cage pain, yeah, I know, right? These fucking these ca these fucking takes are fucking cage pain. Care Jesus Christ! To fight for. Until he finds something more to care about, something greater than himself to live for. That's that's no. The reason why Johnny has been fumbling around acting like a fool this whole time was to shock the audience that he can fight. No, that's not what it was. That's not what it was. He never got the opportunity. He just never got the opportunity to do it. Because again, up until the point where he, up until the point where he jumps into the forest after the building is burned, after being chased by the Tarkatan, that's when he realizes it's real. Up until that point, like. During that entire time before that, he'd been thinking that he's been on a movie set this entire time. That's what it was. Holy ball, Johnny Cage can fight. In MK9, all I needed was one line to convince me Johnny could fight. Fans think my moves are all wire work and special effects. Well, when you're playing a chapter system in a game, obviously your character can fight. So like, and you're and you're going and you have to go through like four fights each chapter until you get to the next. So of course you're going to figure out that the character can fight through the beginning because like you can't do that like through like a, unless unless it was just cutscenes only. You can't do that through the beginning. But again, that wasn't the entire that wasn't the point. The, the point wasn't supposed to be Johnny Cage. Johnny Cage fighting, being able to fight and being a good fighter was not a twist. It wasn't supposed to be a twist. Truth is I am a special effect. Badass in Scorpion's Revenge. Oh, Johnny Cage to fight. With high OP he is here. It would make more sense if he activated his green glowy powers. But I guess that's too silly for our dark edgy I, I will I will say that I do wish I will say that I do wish that Johnny Cage used his powers in, in Scorpion's Revenge. We got it in, in Battle of the Realms, but I wish we got it in Scorpion's Revenge. Tid movie. Not like this isn't more silly. Look how strong Johnny is. He can knock someone True. down, make them True. float in the air, True. and disappear. Oh my gosh, Xanax, stop complaining and nitpicking and just enjoy the movie! Okay, we look at Johnny Go. Not punch reference. I clap! Jean Claude Van Damme reference. Clap, clap! Sonya joins the action too. Even though she looked like she was dying, she must have gotten motivated. And they dynasty warriors, everyone. We. We cut back to Liu Kang vs Goro uh -oh. for some intense action. Uh oh. Oh, thank you, Liu Kang. As it turns out, Goro was only using 10% of his powers and then decides True. to beat the shit out of Liu Kang. Big dick Goro energy. To Sonya and Johnny, as Kano finally fights Sonya, and it only lasts for 20 seconds, which is also the amount of time it took Johnny to run over here. And then Kano gets defeated. Wait a minute. And then Kano dies. <laughs> no losers allowed. We cut back to Liu Kang getting his ass kicked, and Sean finds something weird in the wine. It's, that was a bait. That was a based moment. Bad guy means being evil. That was a That was that was a based moment. That was a based moment where Shang Shang was like. Do you really think I would fall for that? He looks he literally looks at him as he's pouring it down like Like that that was badass. That was badass. Being bad at what you do. Then Shan Tsung grabs Quan Chi, rendering him useless. You know, we later see how strong Quan Chi is. So it sure is convenient plot-wise that he's not doing anything here. I heard people are pissed at Luke. <laughs> if you're being trapped by sorcery. There's, it, it's a different scenario. If you're being trapped by sorcery, 
And and it's clearly a I think it's clearly established that it's not clearly, but it's like pretty implied that Shang is more smarter and more powerful than 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 Quan Chi if he's able to trap Quan Chi in that way and outsmart Quan Chi. So I think it's pretty much implied that you know that that that, that Shang is a little bit more powerful than Quan Chi. But it's two different action scenes. It's two different scenes. One is being trapped within sorcery. Another is having free reign against someone who isn't sorcerer, who, who doesn't have sorcery, but is very powerful and has powers of his own. It's some guy, it, it's one, one part you're trapped, another, you, you have free reign to do what you want, you have free reign to go head to head, you know, against someone who's at your level. Hang for being very weak here, the legendary hero of the Mortal Kombat franchise gets beat up by the sub boss, but to be honest, I don't really care. I wow. don't really like this Liu Kang anyway. Wow, brave. I'm just happy so brave. Goro. Go Goro. I'm very brave, guys. Just how mighty you are. Goro, Goro, Goro. Boom. Rip. No way. No way. No way. No way. Worst movie ever, guys. They killed Goro. Oh my god. Guys. Guys, worst movie ever. Worst movie ever. I can't actually believe it. I can't believe it. Using that dumbass force field from the beginning. I guess it's only important not to interfere the first fight and not the finals. Once you get to the final boss, the the tournament had not begun. The tournament had not begun in the beginning of the movie. So the reason why the force field was up in the beginning of the movie when uh, Sonya tried to go like uh, to the stage where Goro was at was because the tournament had not begun. So you're going up there. If you go up there, you you risk the threat, or you, it's it's possible that you're threatening the champion, and you can't do that. You know, you can't threaten the champion. So here's a force field just to block you off. The tournament has begun. Once you have reached the final boss or the final champion, you have free reign to do whatever the fuck you want. You have the free reign to go. Like you, you've reached there. You've got there. Like, man. Like it's 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 the point is to get to Goro. If you get to Goro, there's no stopping you. That was the whole point of the tournament. Some should have just disqualified Scorpion here, but instead he turns him into the new champion to take on Liu Kang. I hate how he, he doesn't turn him into the new champ. He is the champion. <laughs> he he is the he is the champion. He is the champion. Like he like, technically he is because he was the one who killed Goro. But it Scorpion's revenge didn't in a weird way where Scorpion was fighting on behalf of Outworld. So Scorpion killing Goro makes. Scorpion the, the sort of inheriting the champion role so he sort of still has to he still has to defeat he still has to defeat the opponent in order to further progress outworld technically winning the tournament so yes so like so so like so yes that that's that's why Scorpion was able to yield and like say like yield and say hey I give the I give the I give the win to Liu Kang. You know, I give the win to Liu Kang. I give the I give the win to the other the other the other opponents. How much he doesn't care. I hate this fucking shunt son. Give wow. me back my carry Hiroyuki. Wow. Now Scorpion is presented with two choices. Either kill Liu Kang and get his revenge, or help Liu Kang and save Earth Realm. The cliche choice would be to save Earth. The darker choice would be revenge. The dumb Guys is cliche. It's cliche, guys. It's cliche for a hero's journey to come full circle. To always to it's it's cliche to have it's it's, it's cliche for a hero story to come first first circle and save the day at the end. It's very cliche. Choice. I mean, I mean, technically it is, but come on. This is what happens. We are giving Scorpion his cake and eating it too. He gets to make that change that arc a little bit, but he's also gonna get the thing that he wants. Scorpion teleports behind Shant Sun. Bet you wish you had your dumbass force field now, and forfeits the tournament. Liu Kang, I yield. No! Then the tournament is finished. Outworld has lost. 
Earthrealm is safe. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> bruh, bruh, no, 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 man, oh, this is, okay. <laughs> That's fucked up. That's the stupidest rule I've ever heard. The Rocker, Reptile, and Goro are laughing at how bad this is from heaven. Okay, I have so many issues with this. Oh, no. But let me start Which is it? One. What are they? Do you mean the tournament is over? Tournament is finished. Tournament is over. Kang still yes. Has to face Shant Sun, the final boss of Mortal Kombat. No! Um, no! Actually, Sonic, if you paid more attention, then you'd hear Shane say that Goro is the champion of Outworld. True. He's making Goro the final boss of this yes! tournament. Yes. Shut up. Yes. Uh, excuse me. That's shut true. Up. I can put. What do you mean, Josh? What do you mean, shut up? That's true. Goro is the champion, not Shang Tsung. If you defeat the champion, you now become the champion. <laughs> With a lot of bullshit for the sake of it has good action. But this, this crosses a line. That's what line does it cross? It's time to bring back the finger cam. Oh boy. Oh my god. No way he's gonna get so dramatic. He's gonna... No, oh my god. What is he gonna do? You know, like, stuff like humans need to breathe. Yes. Fish need to swim. Shang Tsung needs to be the final boss of the fucking Mortal Kombat tournament. How did they mess this up? How did they put Shang Tsung in a movie and thought, yeah, he doesn't need to fight. He can just be there as like a, a, a host and just be done with it. Like. <laughs> that's his. <laughs> that's his role in the story. That's his role. He's <laughs> That's his role in MK1. In MK1, he is the host. That is his role. The only reason you fight him in MK1 is because in the story, Liu Kang chases him down because Shang tries to bring down the whole island trying to kill the Earthrealm heroes after they have already won. This is after they have already won. This is after they have been declared the winners. That is the only reason, that is the only reason why you fight Shang in MK1. All right? What? <clears throat> you know what? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. <sighs> let's start from the beginning. And let's the ask beginning. a simple question. What did Shang Tsung do? In this movie. Be a host. So, um, Be very charismatic. He was a nice host. Yes. Um, he he explained the tournament very, very well. He, he was, he was, he was our introduction to what Mortal Kombat is as the host of a Mortal Kombat tournament. And you're in a movie. I think it's a really good job to be able to be the person to present how Mortal Kombat works. All right. Allegedly hired some black dragon. Yes, such a Shang Tsung thing to do, try to cheat, showing, showing Shang Tsung's character and how, how snaky he is. Like, it's, Shang Tsung's a fucking snake. Lost game. Pathetic! I'm Sorry, wasn't this the guy who claimed he won nine tournaments? Not Goro, Shang Tsung. No! No! Goro won nine tournaments. He calls him his champion. Goro did. <laughs> he like like Shang when Shang says I won nine tournaments. He's saying that because he's on the side of Outworld. Not he doesn't mean like he literally himself is the reason why Outworld won nine tournaments. He's just saying that because he hosts he he's he's the host of the tournament and he's also like in charge. He, he, he's all he's he's on he's the host of the tournament on behalf of Outworld. So like, <laughs> won nine tournaments apparently, and and he's not even a fighter in this movie. Because he's not supposed to be. <laughs> he's the fucking host. Seriously? No 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 no. He says, "I Shang Tsung, winner of the nine Outworld tournaments." I think he says, "I." I think he says, I, Shang Tsung, winner of the nine uh, Earthworm Tour. Either he's talking, again, either he's, either the next line is, welcome you to Mortal Kombat. So it like, he takes the line out of context or 
it's still like implying that like hey like i'm i'm fighting on behalf of outworld like i'm representing outworld as the host so technically like i'm winning like technically i win like he's claiming credit like just like how like shang Tsung would do because that's how he that's how he works he's like you know he's he's evil you know he's he's, he's just like that but like yeah like it, it <laughs> removes our, yeah. his soul it's either of those two magic and the ability to transform into anyone he wants and he did none of that well, I will say I'll give him that. That I'll give him that. That I wish he did more of the Shang shit. But he did do the sorcery thing and 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 asserting his dominance over Quan Chi like a Giga Chad. Not a zilch. All he did was the the Doctor Strange PowerPoint True. presentation, teleporting combatants, True. and a fiery grabby hands. That's also made sure may, uh, did some really did some really shady shit to make sure the Earthworm heroes don't win. Try to cheat, which is what he does <laughs> it's like so lame quan chi quan chi quan chi shang sung then shang sung in this movie i'll also give him that shang sung shifting like shang sung that's not really a quan chi thing to do i mean they both use sorcery so technically he should be able to do it but I, i'll get I'll, I'll 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 agree a little bit there In this movie, be the host. The host can literally replace Shang Tsung, and nothing would change. Nothing. Goro can host a tournament and fight Liu Kang. There is no point of having Shang Tsung in this movie at all. People who are Mortal Kombat fans are gonna get their expectations super subverted by the end of this movie. Not because Scorpion wins by yielding. No, no, no. It's the fact that Shang Tsung is not a fighter in this movie. <laughs> He's not supposed to be a f I, I, I'm gonna have to repeat this, but again. He goes on this whole rant about how Shang Tsung doesn't fight and how he's not a fighter in the tournament, when again, he's not supposed to be. He's a host. He does not fight in the tournament. He does not fight. He hosts the tournament. Again, different continuities, different stories, uh, wrote it in different ways, where like sometimes where it would make it out to be like, Shang Tsung is a former champion. If he chooses to fight, he may be able to, but that's just not that's not wasn't established here. That's not how that's not how it worked. That's not how it worked. That's just not how it works here. So if it doesn't work here, then like, yeah, he's not supposed to that's not how you're supposed to you know write Shang Tsung. That way Scorpion yielding will let them win the tournament. That is the plot twist. That is the mind blowing fact. It's Let me tell you something. My expectations were definitely wow. subverted. I Whoa. did not expect that at all. No that way. Subversion. Wow. I totally didn't expect that. Great job. Whoa. Guys. Amazing subversion of expectations. Wow. Oh. People who know nothing about Mortal Kombat are going to walk out of this movie thinking that Shang Tsung is the pussy secretary character <laughs> that stands next to the big boss. He sort of is. He sort of is. I mean, he's good. He's a good one. He sort of is. But I'm pretty sure no one's going to think of him as a lame character. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I have not seen anybody like, like who people who like Scorpion's Revenge, or even people who don't like Scorpion's Revenge, like two people out there. I'm not sure. I, I, there's literally nobody out there who doesn't like Scorpion's Revenge, basically. Um, <laughs> everyone agrees that that's like a really, really good movie. Um, <laughs> just, I don't think anyone's gonna come out here thinking that uh, that Shang Tsung was a bitch or something like that. Or he's lame, but he sort of is like a secretary to Sh Sh Shao Kahn. But in reality, he's supposed to be a big boss character himself. This <laughs> is a disgrace to wow. Shang Tsung's name. Whoa! No way! <gasps> no! Legacy. No! You know, people will like this movie. I don't think I've ever heard anyone utter a single praise. Me? For Me? Shang Tsung was great. He was a great character in this movie. Everybody, everybody knows that Shang was great. I would love to see the Shang's uh, voice actor in this movie be the Shang in like future Mortal Kombat titles if they can't get Terry Tagawa. Obviously, Terry Tagawa should be the first choice no matter what. But if they can't get him, this guy, this guy 100%, like 100% captures the essence of Shang Tsung. I think everybody can agree with that. Shang Tsung's character, he's just that pathetic. I fucking hate wow. it. Wow. And I'm done ranting. No way. I cannot believe how much bullshit I'm feeling just Whoa. because 
Shang Tsung is in the final boss of this movie. Whoa. It's bullshit. It's stupid. It completely ruins the movie, in my opinion. Wow. Just one point. Just one thing <laughs> ruins the entire movie. Shang Tsung. I am not done with this video. <gasps> no way. I still have to go on about <gasps> Scorpion. Oh, no. Back to the video. Oh, no. What will he say about I really, Scorpion, really guys? Hate how they made Scorpion the hero of the story. <laughs> One of the reasons. Of course, did. everybody says that. Like, why is Scorpion the main character? Uh, because he is. Because he is, and he just is, and it does not hurt the movie at all. There is literally nothing about the movie that hurts. He gets character development. His story starts from A to B in a proper way, in a very simple way. And that's all you need, and that's fine. If it has a coherent and as, if it has a coherent story, has coherent writing, competent writing, finishes an arc, then you're fine. And that's what. Okay. Definitely to shock the audience, Liu Kang losing and Scorpion being the hero is so subverting expectations. I do love what you did here, where it's like Liu Kang didn't win the tournament. Right. There's so many different outcomes in the game. Every character you play has a different ending. Which right. one is the real ending? I like that we didn't have the no. chosen one win. I applauded it for being different. It broke new ground. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I swear. I swear to God. I think every. I think. God damn. I. I. I might get. I. I don't want to fully go on to this point, but I think. Red Letter Media and the reviews have like poisoned people's like judgments on mu movies. Like any time a movie does something different, like they will fucking do the Red Letter Media bit. Like the, the like this thing right here. I I see this all the time. This isn't just necessarily like an attack on Sonic or anything like that. But this is just like a thing that I see all the time. J yes, there are certain there are plenty of cases of like things being different. That is, that is just, that is, it's pointless to be different. Like, it, like, like being different doesn't always mean good, but it also doesn't always mean it's a bad thing either. Like being different can mean a good thing. Like if you have the only, the only reason why you should be different is if you're going to have, if you're going to, if you're going to offer like a good alternative story or something like that and having an underdog story for Liu Kang it's not a bad thing. Instead of him being the champion in the first one, instead of instead of that, but going for like a underdog story, I don't think that's a bad thing. Just because it's different doesn't mean it's a bad thing. You know, I, I'm pretty sure everybody can agree with that. That like that. You know, that's not a. It's not necessarily a bad thing to be different all the time. You know, being different can be good. You know, you don't always have to follow the entire source material. Sometimes the source material is bad or sometimes the and the director wants to do their own vision and they have something that's really competent. And you know if it's competent and different, go for it. I think having an underdog story for Luke Kang fits the character of Luke Kang cuz Luke Kang is an underdog villain. He I mean, an underdog villain. He is an underdog type of character. He wins in the first in the first uh in the first game. Um, and he wins in the second game and then wins in the third one, probably the fourth one as well. But I mean, like his entire character is an underdog. So them going with a more, them going, delving into that in a different type of way is a good thing because that's just his character. But the main reason I don't like Aero Scorpion is a very simple why. Why does Scorpion want to save Earthrealm? Scorpion's biggest motive is to avenge his clan and family, yet he helps save Earthrealm. Because, 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 because he is a free, free man. man. No. He can choose his own destiny. Yes. Are you doing yes, true. Is that supposed to be a bad thing? Remember? Live in the past or live for the future. What's better for the future? All right. He chooses to be better than himself. He, he, he chooses, Scorpion chooses to be, uh, to, to, to do more than revenge. To, to fight for the greater good because you know that 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 is who Scorpion is. That's how Scorpion always was. Scorpion was like that at MK2. Scorpion realized to to you know uh, Scorpion grew out of the whole uh, Scorpion grew out of the whole vengeance thing since MK2. It was other games like MK4, MK Armageddon, Arm MK MK4 Armageddon, a little bit of MK3. Uh he's he learned to like he he learned to realize of the bigger of the bigger things that are at stake and that's just totally within character with scorpion because that's that's been that's been the case since mk2 living for the future and he chooses to save the world 
because that's what heroes do. Edward True. had a Kragerism after this. I have a theory True. as to why they did this. During the movie, they keep pushing the revenge bad narrative. Revenge is too heavy a burden to carry. Vengeance is not the way, Scorpion. You don't have to be this person. You don't have to fall into the revenge game because that's not necessarily going to give you the freedom you think you need. At the end of the day, revenge is this kind of like cancerous thing. It True. It never does what you think it's going to do. True. It never fills that hole. I think True. what I love about Scorpion too is that kind of nihilism. You know, at the beginning, obviously, he just is like consumed with one thing. It's not right or wrong. It's just, you did this to my family and now you're going to pay. So by having Scorpion help Liu Kang, it's the point of the the point of the revenge bad story was scorpion realized that him get, scorpion realized that revenge was blinding him and it blinding him it blinded him up to the point it blinded him up to the point where he killed an innocent man which was behan not well yeah he, where he killed an innocent man he killed he killed sub zero he thought he got his revenge because he was focused on revenge and revenge only. That's why he killed himself because that's why he killed himself killing Sub Zero because he thought, all right, this is it. This is all I'm going to do. This is all I'm going to do. I'm going to kill Sub Zero with me and that's it. That's all I got to do. But then when he realizes that revenge, his revenge driven uh, narrative and mindset didn't get him what he wanted and instead ended up just not fixing a single thing, it's a bad thing. That's a mistake. Now, now he's got to right the wrongs and be smarter about it. It's not about like, it's not, it's not about like him. Like, it's not about like being revenge all of a sudden being good because Quan Chi is getting to die. No, it's about being smart about what you're doing, living for the future. How the hell, how the hell do you expect Scorpion to grow? If he lets uh, Quan Chi live, if Quan Chi lives, Quan Chi is, you know, Quan Chi is still over Scorpion's head. He will always he will, he's always going to be above Scorpion because at the end of the day, uh, because at the end of the day, Scorpion, uh, Quan Chi was the one who killed uh, his family and clan, and uh, he killed and and, and and Scorpion killed an innocent man. Like it's just like it's it's it, he the revenge bad narrative. It, the point was him realizing that he killed Sub Zero and he didn't get what he wanted. Now he got to be more smarter than that and realize what realize that re being only revenge driven doesn't get you what you want you got to be smarter than that and that's what happens he kills he's, he kills uh quan chi because if you kill, kill quan chi you're gonna be a, he's gonna be above here you're gonna be above him but like it's not just because you did a nice thing doesn't mean revenge is okay now in the 1995 movie liu kang wanted revenge for his brother and that was his only reason for joining the Mortal Kombat tournament. The great tournament was too much, much responsibility, but, but vengeance, that's so much simpler. But by the end of the movie, he realizes that this is more than his own selfish desires. It's about saving the world, saving the ones he cares about, the responsibility of the chosen one. I am the chosen one. True. He even responsibility. Surrender, it's over. This is the character growth I like to see. Perhaps it's the same one Scorpion had. It's just that the Scorpion got to kill Quan Chi because, again, if Scorpion kills Qu Scorpion, killing Quan Chi is pretty necessary. It's getting his revenge, yes, but like it, it's him, like it, it, it's him being above it, him, like dealing or like it's him overcoming what made him, what made it, it's him overcoming. What driv what drove his revenge in the first place? Who who set him on that path? Who set Scorpion on the path of revenge? It was Quan Chi. The Quan Chi all this time. If you kill Quan Chi, you're done. You're done. You're done. You're above him. And now, yeah. And not, yeah. But but that's after the. But that's but again they but they put in. But they oh, fuck. It's just so. It's just, okay. But they put in Scorpion killing Sub Zero. Because he, because, he, he, fuck! Scorpion killing Sub-Zero makes him realize that having an, uh, just having no thoughts but to get revenge can lead you to bad, to do bad things and to kill the wrong person. And it, it's just not going to make you feel satisfied. Killing Quan Chi will probably make you feel satisfied because you're overcoming the thing. 
that puts you on the revenge path. We're going for this in Scorpion's Revenge, but I really didn't feel that way. Anyways, the whole Anyways. point of the Scorpion being a hero plot was just so he can fight Guan Chi. I wish Scorpion could just show up and fight Guan Chi, and maybe Liu Kang could fight Goro and Shang Tsung from another scene. But instead, we got Liu Kang losing to Goro. Scorpion assassinated. Again, Goro. again, the purpose was because the the purpose of Liu Kang losing was so he can become an underdog type of character. You know, he's always not like. So he doesn't like he doesn't complete like he yeah he's an underdog type of character to 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 go on with that. He fights Liu Kang. Then he betrays Shang. Then Sun. saves Earth. Then well. fights Guan Chi. This is so tedious. I should probably talk about the fight itself. It's great. Probably True. the best fight in this movie. Yep. I love the weapon usages and the teleporting. 1995 reference. I clear. True. Say the line, Bart. Get over here. Yeah. And the final fatality was very satisfying. Then Scorpion accepts his death, thus concluding his arc. Again. Then we see our heroes leaving the island. Again. But we don't see anyone else leaving. What happened to the other fighters? So there's other stuff going on yeah. on the island. It, it, that that question doesn't matter. It, it's who the fuck cares? <laughs> not seeing right. other fighters doing their thing. And... A bunch of spin-offs. <laughs> I guess they all just killed each other. Johnny and Sonia have a sweet Based. Heart, and Raiden gives some advice to Liu. I have failed you. I could not defeat Goro if it wasn't for Scorpion. Failed? No. Your destiny was never to defeat Goro, Liu Kang. It was to defeat Shao Kahn. When I saw this scene, I thought he meant failed. No. Oh boy. Despite what the games would have you believe, it would oh boy. Be your Look who it is. <gasps> no way. I mean, this is a movie. In no the way. In movies, it's always someone else's destiny, like Johnny Cage or Cole Young. No, your destiny is to defeat Shao Kahn, the man whom Goro's boss serves and fears for his incredible might. The man who has maintained a mighty. Technically, technically, Liu Kang's destiny is to defeat. Hey, no. Technically, Liu Kang's destiny is to save Earthrealm, protect Earthrealm. In whatever form that takes, whether that is defeating Goro, whether that's defeating Shao Kahn, whatever form that takes, that is his destiny. That is his endgame. Now, having not, ha not never having Liu Kang win against Goro in any other media besides the games kind of does suck. But yes, if your destiny is to defeat is is to save Earthrealm and to protect Earthrealm, and the, and the way you do it is by defeating Shao Kahn, that's still your destiny. That's still Liu, Liu Kang's destiny is still there. Empire for over ten thousand years. Ten thousand years, guys. I know that seems, as Johnny Cage would put it, ass backwards. But rest assured, your name will be in the title of the next movie, and that will give you the power and the plot armor you need to overcome the Empire's incredible might. Unless they choose to focus on Sub Zero seeking to avenge his brother, maybe. Hey, take these non -shots. I was that was that was a part that was a part. That was that was a part of the movie. Out world, where Shao Kahn is giving Shang Tsung the biggest dressing down of his entire life. Whoa! It was that old fool Raiden. No, this is all Scorpion's fault. He killed the Lin Kui. He killed the Black Dragon. He killed Goro, and he lost you the tournament. It's all. Scorpions fault and you allowed him to be a true but I mean like if Sco I, I, true but if 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 Shang Tsung was the one oh god if, if Shang Tsung said oh god it was fucking Scorpion and uh, that wouldn't help his case because Scorpion was fighting on behalf of Outworld in in Scorpion's Revenge so if it said so if he said like you let our own guy you let our own guy uh, win the tournament fuck this all up for me like, that would make him look bad. Now, he, no matter what, Shang Tsung looks bad here. But, like, you know, it, Shang Tsung lying is lying about this thing is, like, it, it, that's, that's just Shang Tsung being Shang Tsung. That's just who he is. Hero under your nose the whole time. Then we get a close-up of Shao Kahn. And looks awesome in that movie. shot. Tired. That's how I felt after watching this movie. On Guys. I'm kind of tired right now. I don't think we're going to get through the Battle of the Realms video. I don't think we can do it. I don't think we can do it. I don't think we can do it. 
but if you really dive into it, things really start to fall apart. You know, here's here is the conclusion. I feel like this is how what is I it? Feel about this movie. How do you feel about it? Tell me. Tell us. <laughs> Tell me. Uh, to wrap this up, let me say my three main points as to why I dislike this film. Three points. Okay. Number three. One, the characters weren't that great. Either they were boring and felt like background characters, or they were annoying and I didn't like them. I didn't <laughs> care for any of the main characters and I wish they all died. I hope you die! I probably only like the characters that actually died. You my real homies. Number two. <laughs> the characters that died literally did not a single thing. They did less in the movie than the actual main characters did. Every character had a beginning, middle, and end. They all had like their own little tiny arc. Can we get can we can, can, can we get to battle all the rums already? If you're gonna be different and change things up, at least try to be smart about it. Right. You still have to stay within the rules that we've established at the beginning, and we have. Right. This whole tournament was just Scorpion's playground. He got to kill whoever he wanted, and Sean didn't give a shit. Guys, I care so much about guys. I care so much about Scorpion killing Black Dragon goons. I, I, I can't believe how OP he was. I, I, can't, I can't handle it. I can't handle it, guys. He was just killing dra Black Dragon and Link Quagoons the entire time. So overpowered. I can't believe it. Number three. It should have been just one story. This movie is constantly switching between Scorpion's story and the Earthrealmer's story. <laughs> Subplots exist in movies. I'm subplots exist in movies. The subplot was the, the sub the subplot was the Earthrealm heroes. Like and the Earthrealm heroes, they all got their due. They all got their fair share of like beginning, middle, and end. They all had their stuff. They, 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 they all had they all came from they all had their only tiny little arcs. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that does it that's movies 101 all right let's finish the rest of this i'm not gonna play that all right. and i don't really think it works we keep shifting focus as to what we should care about 50 percent of either which it all comes for a circle though means it's the master of neither and it's it, it all comes for a circle though because scorpion winning means earth realm is saved the earth realm winnings it means earth realm is saved it all comes for a circle Yes, there are different little. Th there are different parts of the movie that are. There are different things happening in the movie, but at the end, it all comes full circle. So it's not like fifty percent. Like some characters don't get enough development. Like the characters that we're supposed to care about don't get enough development. All of them get development. There's just two things happening at the same time, and eventually, they come to the end. They come. They come full circle. They come full circle. Especially the ending. C <laughs> Cage pain, <laughs> guys. No, the cage pains in the chat is real. A scorpion butts in to save the day. It felt really forced. I have many other points as to why I dislike this movie, but these three are the main reasons. I'd like to make a disclaimer and say there were definitely elements I liked about this film. The action and fight scenes were fantastic. Even the ones I didn't like had great animation. True. The director Ethan Spaulding is a fan of martial art films and has worked on stuff like Avatar The Last Airbender. So he definitely knows his stuff. I especially liked Assault on Arkham that was directed by Ethan. It's a Suicide Squad movie. That is actually good. The voice acting was great. They got Patrick Seitz back as Scorpion. Based. Giga Chad. Social distancing. And they even got the voice of Goro from the 1995 movie to play Goro again in this movie. The voice cast seemed to have a great time with this film. And you love to see that. I'm a huge Bruce Lee fan. A couple of years back, I was sort of training to play him in a film. They wanted me to think of an animal. First thing that came to my mind was sort of a wolf character. And they're just like, perfect. Now, fit that punching bag with the sound of a wolf. Okay. And this Bruce this Lee This is like some extra stuff on So when so. I got the audition for Lee Kang, play like the I speed went in to do all the sound effects, it kind of came naturally. I kind of just channeled him and I channeled the wolf. <laughs> it sounds like funny, but it's true. Like... <laughs> Alright, I'm speeding up a little bit, guys. We gotta get to the Battle of the Realms. 
the R-rated Gorafest is amazing. To be able to see this kind of stuff on the big screen is a dream come true for many MK fans, and the animators definitely went all out on this. I pushed it as far as I could possibly think to push it. As violent as we could possibly be is where I wanted to go. And I told the designers and stuff because we had to draw some pretty, <laughs> some pretty awful things. I told them, look, relish this because you'll probably never get to do it again. You'll probably never get to work on something that's so R-rated and it's, you know, it's really the movie I've always wanted to make. And I also like Reptile's design in this. So in the end, would I recommend this movie? No. Nope. Too much BS wow. to recommend. I wow. Say I Brave. Recommend going on to YouTube and search for all the fight scenes and enjoy that. And thus concludes my review. Hopefully you can understand my point of view as to why I didn't like this film. Though I must say, I'm really shocked how many people like this movie. I don't think I found a single negative review of this movie on YouTube. Do you think that has to do with the fact that the game, the, the movie is actually really good? Actually, I don't know how the fourth snake feels about this. Let's ask him. Hello? Hey, what's up? Hey, so, uh, I just want to ask, uh, did you like Scorpion's Revenge? <laughs> <laughs> guys, I don't know just how I'm gonna sleep at night. Me. I don't know how I'm gonna sleep at night, guys. I don't know. I don't know how I can I do it. The school channel. Want to chat about the okay, we don't care about this. Okay, fuck. Okay, we're done. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> I thought this was just gonna be a quick br I thought this was gonna- I thought this was gonna be a fucking quick, a quick fucking like run through of like different points that I, uh, the different counterpoints that I had, but Jesus Christ, how long? <laughs> oh my God, God damn! God. Oh my fucking God, guys, guys, I'm actually, oh, uh, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do the Battle of the Realms video. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it, guys. I can't do it.